Alright, so this video I'm going to be showing um, how we make our wire rigs. Um, there are a lot of people on different groups that say that tuna don't bite wire. I don't necessarily believe that's the case. I think tuna don't bite bulky and ugly wire rigs. They will totally eat low profile um, wire rigs, usually single strand, that sort of thing. I've caught probably 14 or 15 tuna so far this year. Um, biggest being like 53 pounds and uh, they all eat wire. So. They do in fact eat wire as long as the rigs are pretty. And I'm going to be showing how I make mine. We use um, small hooks, so low profile but strong hooks, uh, size 4 live bait gamakatsu, 50 pound titanium wire. I don't use the uh, stainless steel, uh, this is a nicer quality product and I end up crimping it anyway. Um, and then larger size swivels, these are croc swivels, these are really nice, uh, 180 pound test, and then uh, size 3 um, liter sleeves, these are the crimps. Then you'll need tools, crimping tool, pliers, and then for each individual rig, you need two of the hooks, four of the sleeves, one swivel, and then plenty of the uh, titanium wire. The absolute worst feeling is when the uh, <laughs> when you get a strike, you're not running wire, and it just clean cuts because you pretty much know that that was an ono. Oh and um, it's a bad feeling. Another one is like when you tie a bad knot or if your crimp fails, um, but that's why I started making the combination crimp. I think I'm the first person that I've seen try the, the double uh, version of the crimp. Uh, that's because I didn't trust my initial crimping job um, well enough, so I wanted to make two fail safes essentially. Uh, so I prefer to run wire at all times because there's really no way to, if you're on a kayak, there's really no way to predict that um, no, no, won't be around. I've caught them anywhere from 90 feet to 300 feet of water, and uh, that's right around the same area where I'm catching shivis and mahis. So I just always want to be prepared. I don't want to lose an ono because I wasn't using the right gear. Um, and I found out that tuna will eat the wire, so I've just been running it, and um, anything ends up biting it. But um, essentially, what I'm doing is I'm tying one little wire rig with a stinger, also wire, both single hooks, no no trebles. I like that low profile, it keeps the bait alive for longer and um, you can get away with wire but not scare away any potential strikes. So the crimping method that I use is uh, something I've joked around and called the combination crimp. So it's a combination of two different crimps. There's the original one where you kind of go in once, back out and then back in and then crimp it. But also a uh, Flemish eye where I go into two circles. This way, if one were to fail, then the other catches. I've yet to have one of these uh, fail on me, but these are the, uh, the ideal way of crimping. But I, I've been calling it the combination crimp because it's a combination of two different ways of crimping. First step I'm gonna take is I'm gonna measure out a length of this titanium wire, and I'm going to put on one of the sleeves. So I'm gonna insert that over through. And uh, I'm going to first tie it up to one of the hooks. So my first step here is I'm going to make that Flemish eye. So I feed it in through the eye, feed it back through the eye, make one loop. And right about there is that's when I'm going to measure up my tag end. You don't want to waste too much wire. So I measure out a decent amount and then I'm going to pull this tight. That's a little too much, so I'm going to loosen that up a bit, right there. And I'm just going to pull this nice and tight. You want that to be really small profile, that loop, uh, so that it's not too bulky. I'm going to feed it through one more time, and that's going to make an eyelet that's pretty free to move. So there's a lot of free mobility for this hook. It keeps the bait natural, keeps the bait alive. 
and allows the hook to set really well when a fish strikes it. So next step, after you have your Flemish eye, you're going to thread this uh, crimp over both the tag end and the main line up tight to the Flemish eye, making essentially this little, this little loop here. And now this is where the combination crimp. Some people would end right there and they would crimp it off and then cut this. But I like to do an additional fail safe, with his, which is to get that tag end, feed it back through, make a little loop there, feed it through to the other side, see where it's sticking out, guy with a pair of pliers, if I can grab that, yep, pull that tight. If you pull too tight, then the Flemish eye might tighten on itself. But you pull it to the most part pretty tight. And in reality, both of those crimps, this method and this method, could hold on its own. But I like to do both, just because it takes me practically no extra time. And then go through and crimp it down. With the wire, you don't have to be concerned about flaring the ends. You can just crimp it down as tight as you can because it's not like you're going to cut the like a monofilament would. Once you have that, it's all flat crimped. Trim off the uh, the additional piece. Then you just have a little tag extra. But then you have a free to move hook. You don't want it to be too tight where there's no mobility with it. You want this to be freely moving. Right here is the step in which I trimmed and then had a head. Um, I like to make the lead to the swivel longer than the trail. Uh, I usually make this one anywhere from uh, 10 inches to a foot. And then I have a like a 4 to 6 inch um, stinger hook, depending on the size of the opelli you like to do. This one is not adjustable but um, it will fit into most of Pelu that we will run usually. So I just got done tying that uh, stinger. You can see the stinger is a lot shorter of a wire. I'm now going to attach this guy to this guy. So I'm gonna put this into the eyelet of the first hook and crimp it the same way that I was before. I'm gonna measure out exactly how long I want that stinger, which is anywhere from four to five inches depending on the Pelu I'm planning on running. So I like it to be, yeah, right about there. One thing that you want to make sure you do is make sure you put this crimp on prior to starting um, the knot, the Flemish eye. Um, it would be, <laughs> it's always annoying and I made that mistake quite a few times at the beginning. But uh, there's no way to put it on after the fact. So I'm going to start making my Flemish eye right here. Make sure that you're not going through the other Flemish eye. You want that freedom of motion. It keeps the bait livelier and it allows the, uh, the bait to have that freedom. Um, that a live bait should uh, That will entice a better strike even using wire sometimes the bulky wire rigs one the fish will see them two It will interfere with the movement of the live bait To an extent in which the fish catch on realize and then it can worry your presentation altogether So it's a combination factor. It's not that they just see it, but it's also that it interferes with your bait too much So I'm gonna pull that guy nice and tight make it the first initial piece of the Flemish eye I have the trailer on there. Um, I'm gonna make the second loop of the Flemish eye right here. It's a little harder the second time when you have that that other wire on there, but uh, once you get used to it, it works. Pull that tight, make it make a nice tight little eye. Most Flemish eyes have three loops. I don't think that's absolutely necessary, especially because we're doing both crimping methods. You can make a double looped Flemish eye tighter than you can with a three loop. If you make your tag too short, it makes it pretty tough to get it through, but you can always kind of finagle your way through. There it goes. I'm gonna grab that tag end, pull it nice and tight. There we go. And now I'm gonna crimp that guy off before trimming. Always crimp first, then trim. I don't mind a little tag end sticking out. Yes, it might poke your fingers a couple of times, but you'll get used to it. And then I'll go through and trim that little tag end. It's looking like a nice little rig now. 
Uh, you can see that the trailer hook is attached. It allows freedom of motion of these hooks. Uh, these hooks don't have any interference because of those Flemish eyes. Now the last step is to attach the swivel to the top. So you have something to tie your uh, top shot on onto. So I'm going to do that same combination crimp that I outlined before through the uh, swivel eye there. Out through one loop, measure it up. Pull it nice and nice and tight. Loop through again. Go through, so then the Flemish eye is there, showing it again, just so you guys know. Back up tight, loop this guy back in, we're doing the other crimping method, which some people just tie that straight. <clears throat> I think it works well if your crimp is perfect. My biggest ever tuna came on just the second version of the crimp, but I also have had it fail before, and it's a very upsetting case because it's just a, a technical part, so whether or not the crimp slips and whatnot. This way, if either one were to slip, it will end up still getting the fish in the kayak, which is what matters to me. So I'm going to tighten this guy down, crimp it thoroughly. And uh, yeah, even if it slips, one of them, the other one will catch. Never had one of these give up on me, which is nice. That's my, uh, that's my wire rig. I have a swivel that I'm going to tie my main line onto. Lead hook, probably about 10 inches and then trailer that's uh, five to six inches. So this is meant for just live baiting Opelu. It's the best whenever it's uh, in a zone where you can get Onos or Shibis. This one works on both. I've noticed that even larger Shibis, if they gut hook, especially if you're using not circle hooks. Um, I've had my biggest ever, it was an, it was an ahi, um, swallow the entire bait and chafe 80 pound fluorocarbon because I was not using a circle hook. I was using just fluorocarbon and it chafed on that fight. Huge tuna will brawl for such a long time and they have enough teeth that it will cut. This actually holds up really well against the tuna's mouth. Main thing is the wire, it's not super long. I know some people that do like two feet, which is a little overkill and potentially could interfere with uh, getting bites but this, this seems to work for me. Okay, yeah, so that's my rigging. Um, I know this, uh, everyone has their own strategies to all of it, but I've gone through a lot of the learning curve already. Um, a lot of my past rigging has failed. This is the one rig that has finally never had uh, a situation which has uh, failed on us. Um, we've caught plenty of nice fish so far this year on it. Since I started using it, this has been the only foolproof rig. Um, and this is how I do it. It'd be great to see if other people end up making this rig, um, what they catch on it. I know I have a friend in Maui who caught a huge sailfish on this exact rig, um, even though it was wire, I've caught plenty of tuna on it, mahis, kavas, onos, all that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, if you guys have any other questions on how I rig stuff, um, how I tie my flies, uh, and just general preparation things, I'd, uh, I'd be willing to make some videos, uh, show you guys what I do, because um, it, it works for the most part, um, and it's uh, great to have more interaction.